just thought I'd take a short break just to let you know about becoming a breakout bestie. So we've launched a brand new subscription service for the small businesses that need us in your pocket. So why do you need to become a breakout bestie? Well, it's just a monthly subscription that gives you access to us when you need us. There's a closed group where you can ask us any question you need. There's also an anonymous posting on. So if you've got clients in the same group, you can ask us anything and we'll get back to you. Sometimes that'll be a quick answer. Other times it might be that we need a bit more of an in-depth chat. There'll also be uh, posts and information on the latest trends, the latest strategies for social media, upcoming things from HMRC that you may have missed, just anything you need to make your life easier to run your business. You'll also have access to our client base and money off discounts and vouchers for various services we've got coming out. This is brand new, it's only just been launched, so have a look, go on our website under besties and sign up soon. The way food is at the moment, people are used to the same things 52 weeks of the year, exactly the same. You could go into any one of the supermarkets and it will look the same. You have blueberries now. I don't know how it makes sense. How are blueberries economically viable? How do they get them from Peru to here? I don't understand. Who's getting shafted and where? Welcome to Business Rainbows and Unicorns, where there's no such thing as failure if you don't try. This podcast is specifically for business owners or wannabe business owners. Say you've got a side hustle or you've got a passion for something and you think it'd be absolutely amazing or you see people that do amazing things with their passions and what they enjoy doing. Well, you can do that. So please subscribe and we hope you enjoy listening to this episode. Hi and welcome to this week's episode which is all about Greg from Sunshine and Green. Anyone who knows Greg and I, we you will know uh, individually we both love a chat so together we chatted for quite a while. So we have split this episode into part one and part two. Here's part two, have a listen, let us know what you think. I mean going, going back to waste, you know I, I don't I will put leaves, like salad leaves and spinach and chard, in bags. Yeah. Everything else is loose yeah. in the box. I'll do a post on this soon. Um, it needs to be done. It's been requested. But a lot of stuff, I mean, if you take carrots, best thing you say loose in your box, wrap them in a bag or put them in a Tupperware box or something because they're mm. last months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just put them on the shelf in your fridge so it goes soft within a few days. Yeah. Standard. That's, that's, that's it. And I'll actually defend the supermarkets a little bit here because they've got, a lot of flack for using plastic. Well, but if they don't use plastic, the amount of food they'll be chucking out every day is vast because you it's it's a disgusting material, but at the same time, this civilization does unfortunately job. doesn't exist without it. We have you'd have to go local without yeah. plastic because you can't ship things across the world without a plastic box or a no. plastic bag. So, you know, to sit there and say, you know, do you remember a couple of years ago when people were in the supermarkets tearing up plastic and chucking it on the floor? Yeah. We don't want this. We'll get rid of single-use plastic. Fair enough. You're right. Yeah. But to do that, we have to completely reinvent the food system. Yeah. Because at the moment, like, the supermarkets, I think it's 96% of the market, they're not very agile. No. They can't go to on-demand greengrocer. They have to have things on the shelves that will be there for a few days. Yeah. So, again, you know, local... If you if I deliver you a veg box, you can have your own bags at home that you use again and again and again yeah, and again. Yeah. Um, and that's that's how you win. That's wow. how you stop throwing food away, and that's how we stop throwing food away, and that's how you get fresh and keep it longer. You know, again, like it's not that the food system is broken; works really well. It's just yeah. it's, we're now realizing there's some problems with it. Yeah. We need to make some changes, and it, uh, this, this is the benefits of local. We can do that. Yeah, can make those changes. So if if you are fed up with plastic. Come and buy a veg box because you'll get a bit. Yeah. Biodegradable. Put it. I was going to say, but your bags are biodegradable. Put it in the brown bin. Yeah. Or recycle them. Yeah. They're not. I mean, if they go in the black bin, that's also fine. Basically, they're biodegradable. So rather than breaking down into small pieces of plastic, they break down into their component gases. Not necessarily great for the world, but it's, it's, it's methane, I think, in the end, which is the same as rotting leaves. Yeah. So that's it's the lesser of evils, but you can recycle them as well. But on the flip side, I think I've 
so your veg box came third was it this Thursday just gone and I've got salad today with those salad leaves that are fine they've not gone to mulch in the bottom of my fridge or anything. yeah they're so the day before yeah that's another difference you know supermarket ones again because the supply chains are so long mm. the salad there was probably picked a week before it got onto yeah. the shelves so you know it's it's a it's a tricky situation and people often say oh you said why you how do your salad leaves last so long mm. put co2 in the bag like, oh, no no just pick them and i give them to you yeah that's it and that's a big difference talking to one of the chefs i delivered to the other day he he bought way too much chard mm. like four kilos of chard i was like a lot yeah you sure <laughs> but i hope he like, actually means that and he admitted he said the next week he's like yeah i bought too much Mm. But it's still good, so I'll still keep using it. A week week later, and you're like, we obviously, because I picked it the day I gave it to you. Yeah. So, you know, there's there's that weapon as well. Yeah, I mean, that that is all a good argument for local food. Yeah. The hard bit is, from my perspective, and a bit I worry about a lot, particularly in May and June, just hungry gal. We can talk about that in a bit more detail, but um, is... The way food is at the moment, people are used to the same things 52 weeks of the year. Exactly the same. Yeah. You could go into any one of the supermarkets and it will look the same. Yeah. I don't know if you've been in Waitrose recently. They've just rebuilt the place and it's like yeah. some sort of vegetable weird utopia. Everything's per- it's weird. It makes me a bit uncomfortable. Um, there's utopia or dystopia. But yeah, it's just but it's, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. And everything's wrapped in plastic. Yeah. And it's just like, ooh. Um, it's all in colour order. Then you've got organic. They put organic first and then the normal stuff second, I've noticed. I mean, that's good, I suppose. They want to sell the organic, but it's it's just so... It's good if the money is going to the right place. That's the thing. But it's it's dutchy. Get... It's all dutchy. Yeah. That's it. That, that's their mating. Yeah. So it's off to the monarchy. I, don't, I wonder if they get subsidies. I assume he probably does for Framlingham, the Framlingham estate. Oh, must... Of course, yeah. Um. Anyway don't talk about subsidies again um <laughs> but you know so it's like you you know what you can get reliably every year every yeah. week of the year so there's periods of time when this country just doesn't yield much variety yeah because of the weather so what have you got brassicas leeks beetroot squash potatoes things that are stored yeah onions what are you going to do? Like, I can't, there's nothing else we can do. With the polytunnels, sure, we can have spinach, we can have salad. Yeah. We can have um, other sort of things, pak choy, nice things like that through yeah. through the winter months. We can do more um, with the right facilities. But you're not going to have the tomatoes. You're not necessarily going to have calabrese, the big broccolis. Yeah. You have purple sprouting broccoli in winter. Yeah. Um, you won't have cauliflowers all year. Pretty close to all year, but you yeah. can't. So, but the supermarkets have filled that gap by buying things in. You have blueberries now. I don't know how it makes sense. How are blueberries economically viable? <laughs> yeah. How do they get them from Peru to <laughs> here? Yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. Who's getting shafted and where? Yeah. For, what is it, like two pounds a punnet? Yeah. Mm, don't know. Not sure about that one. Yeah. But it's a bit, oh, well, same as avocados, isn't it? We won't go down the avocado chat. There's a whole Netflix Netflix thing on the avocados. Avocados do make me angry. <laughs> Just because of the type of people that eat them. Sorry, not to clean out a group there, but you know you know what I mean. There's some virtue signaling with avocados, isn't there? Yes, there are. Well, they've got a whole, there's a whole restaurant, the avocado show. Just put butter on your toast. Yes. Yeah, it's better. It come, you know, <laughs> it's, it's better. Definitely better <laughs> in <laughs> every respect. Socially, environmentally, yeah. or you. Anyway, um, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, so that's I think local can win on that one because it can be all made to order. Even like I would really like to work with some local smallholders soon. We've got a new website going up, so we'll be able to start bringing more people in. Where smallholders don't have a regular supply of meat. Yeah, as a lot of of the meat in this country is farmed, it's it's you you have your animals, they're ready at one point. Yeah, and that's that. Um, supermarkets will have contracts to buy a farmer's cattle. Yep. Um, smallholders, you know, it's okay. So I'll take a step back. I, with the veg boxes, I deliver 52 weeks of the year without a break because yep. I want to create habits for people. I yep. want them to create habits. This is where my veg comes from. Yeah. And that's really important because then they don't have to think about it. 
Um, we're all creatures of habit. I get a bit like something's not right in the day and we're out of sync. It's like, oh no, God, the habit's wrong. And you know, yeah. the bins have changed day. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? So these these things are really important. Better put it on Facebook. When's the big thing? Yeah, you do. You get lost, right? <laughs> don't know what's going on. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, weirdly, I know it's out on the dairy farm. When the clocks changed on a dairy farm, it's chaos. Yeah. Because cows have such a bulletproof routine. Mm. They're up before you waiting to be milked. Yeah. They know. They don't have alarm clocks, nothing. They're there. This is yeah. the routine. If you're half an hour late, they poo everywhere. Yeah. Because they're, they're like, oh, stress, I'm out of sync, it's not good. Well, <laughs> they don't want to be milked and all this sort of stuff. So it's really like just I'm saying that from a point of view of an animal. Yeah. We are animals and routine is really yeah. important, habits. Um, so I want that habit. And supermarkets know that. Oh, and they yeah. have people, that's why they have that route around that they rarely yeah. change because it's like they want to funnel people through and guide you through. Yeah. So you have your, this is where I get my stuff from. Where does yeah. food come from? Supermarket. And I'm not putting them down. That's that's a great marketing no, strategy and, and it's very the, successful. And they've worked well with, and I saw a um, social media post, I think it was a video the other day, showing now, I didn't realise, but I don't go there, um, the club card price as opposed to the normal price. So when you go, and obviously when it's the same as when you go to Waitrose, like, do you have a Waitrose card? Ping, you Waitrose and my price comes down. I'm like, Oh, and they're like, no, that's how much your data means to them. Uh -huh. And yes, going back to corporate world, I sort of, obviously we had to learn from the Tesco's buyers and they're like, yeah, they will know that you put, so down the alcohol aisle, on the end of the alcohol aisle, a certain time of year, you will get bottles of tequila, limes and salt. Sure. The same with PIMS. Sure. You'll have a bottle of PIMS yeah. and then they'll move the strawberries and the other fruit next to the PIMS. We'll do it in the... Because sales would go through the roof. And you're like, oh, yeah, because I don't have to think about it. And my normal route around. Sure. So I get to the pimps and think, oh, crap, I need fruit. By the time you've got back, you've forgotten you haven't bought the fruit. So it's that. It, it's all of that. And you think, well, yeah, actually, that is, that's clever. That's the way you want to go. And anything that makes life easier to say, a bit like Wimbledon. Wimbledon's on, so we all buy strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And next to the strawberries is the cream. <laughs> you don't have to think because you wouldn't normally have cream in your food shop. Yeah, yeah. To pick up the cream when it's next to all the other yeah. dairy. So it they yeah, you can't put them down on that respect because yeah, good idea. Decades worth of, of psychology research. You exactly know, that. It's, it's very good. But it's also like it's a form of manipulation. I mean, it's borderline probably not allowed in yeah, your world, exactly. you know. But at the same time, like you say, if the with the new website and adding on like Biddle's bread, adding on the like I love it and I'm quite proud of the fact that you've got my daughter addicted to your jam. She will now not have any other jam. And yes, I could buy fifty P of jam from the supermarket, but rightly so, and she's an eight year old, she's like, It's not very nice, Mama. I don't want it. So she now refuses to eat bad quality food and that's kind of where i want her to get to yeah yeah i mean it's a big thing i mean that's 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 sort of the point really yeah. is it also it's it's the price of it's proper the quality of it's proper you get what you pay for yeah if you've got you can like you say you can go buy a jar of jam for 50p yeah. it's just sugar yeah there's not very much fruit in there you know the stuff we have is mostly fruit yeah. it's a bit more tart yeah a comment we get from people and that's what they like yeah. Um, and that's sort of the point, isn't it? Because it was, it's jam is for preserving fruit. Yeah. It's not for flavoring sugar. No. Which is what it's become. Um, and the, the psychology of it is really interesting because, uh, so sticking with raspberries, um, in the summer, I was selling punnets of raspberries on the farmer's markets and I had 250 gram punnets. Tesco's price for a, a kilo of raspberries is about 18 19 pounds so well, i was selling them for 20 pounds a kilo in 250 gram punnets so it's five quid yeah which in tesco's would have cost you four pounds something yeah no one would buy them but oh that's expensive five quid i was like oh i sat there oh, scary. It's, it's the same price yeah it's the same yeah and i was like well actually it's not because they sell them in 125 gram punnets so they're two pounds 50 or yeah. two pounds whatever and so I did that at the next farmer's market, sold them all immediately. Yeah. It's the same price, 
for the same weight, but it's half the size punnet. Uh-huh. People snap them up. Yeah. And so it's, it's what you do. Yeah. So um, the, for me, I have to bend a little bit to the way the supermarkets do things mm-hmm. because that's that's how conditioned people are. Yeah. That's an expensive punnet of straw of raspberries. No, not. It's the same. Yeah. Actually, it's almost half the price of Riverford. Yeah. Not to bash Riverford too much, but yeah. I will because I'm going to. Um, it's fact. It's fact. <laughs> yeah. I think there's about £35 a kilo for raspberries. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's that... and. But on the flip side, you would, I would hope in my moon dreams and rainbows kind of world that they're looking at that because they don't want to waste it. So they say, however, the learning for me is a lot of my fruit, veg, what can be, I will look at it and I, I mean, your box is still on. I've got a little box um, trolley thing. It's all fine. It's all edible. It's not gone bad. It's fine. However, I will look and see, okay, what am I going to use this week? Actually, can I freeze that? Can I put it in a um, a bag in the fridge? How? I will look at storage. So same with raspberries. Yeah. I know if I get raspberries from, and this is the condition side of things, if I got a 250 gram punnet of raspberries elsewhere, uh-huh. in two days, I'm not gonna, it's not going to be edible anyway. It's going to be furry. And I don't, we very much in our house, we don't go by use by dates. If it's furry or fizzy, you can't eat it. Otherwise, absolutely fine. So I'm conditioned. If I buy a bigger pot, what if I don't eat them? Fair. So then it's that, it's the wastage. And in my head, as I say, I hope everyone else is the same. But I mean, it might it's be. Interesting point as well, because the way I sort of design the veg box really in terms of the content is around wastage mm-hmm. from, from two points of view. First point of view, I would like people to buy a VegBox every week. Yeah. Because that helps business yeah. side of it. But also, feedback I've had is, not feedback I've had, experiences I've had having veg boxes from other companies before I set this up. Ooh. And you would end up with, they might put in two kilos of potatoes a week. Yeah. Um, I remember once I got a box and it they said, oh, we've had a surplus of kale this week, so you've got like a kilo of kale. Yeah. And it's like, well, I mean, what am I going to do with it all? Yeah, and yeah. So, You're just you know, passing that on. Exactly. So the idea, the way I set up the veg boxes is is more variety. So, you know, I think a, a normal sort of veg box, you might get five veg in there, but quite a lot Yeah. of each one. I'll put 10 in there, eight to 10, but you'll get 600 grams of potatoes Yeah. in a sort of two-person box. Because I think you probably going to have one meal of potatoes a week. Yeah. You have rice, you have pasta. You could probably have a pizza, a takeaway, whatever yeah. it is. You're not going to have veg every day. No. So I'd rather that. But if I put a small amount of potatoes in, I could then put salad, spinach, and something else, and this, and yeah. that, and you can have more variety in there. Yeah. Um, and from a health point of view, more variety is better. Yeah. Um, but it, it stops that wastage because I don't want it to build up. Yeah. I've had three people this year specifically say to me, when they've ordered, could we double up on the potatoes? Uh, I'm going, yeah, sure, fine. And they're happy to pay and whatever. Months later, could we not double up on potatoes? We've now <laughs> got a surplus. It's like, yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this, it's fine. I put that much in for a reason. Yeah. Um, And because I don't want wastage. But again, also, mm-hmm. from a business point of view, I want people to buy every week. Yeah. Um, So it, it works both ways. And, and I think that's takes- better. I think, but then it's changing people's habits because you're trying to get people and the hands up, I'm, you can tell when I'm busy at work because we had a weekly box. We've now gone to fortnightly, <laughs> but it's because I don't have, because I'm so busy at work or well, we're both self-employed. So we're both so busy at work. We don't have time to manage what we're eating. Some days we need, we have free um, pizzas in the freezer for a reason because there's certain days, sure. and these clubs and everything in life. However, there will come a time, and it will be within the next two months, because I know how my routine works, of me being able to step back and go, right, okay, on a Sunday, we will sit and go, right, what have we got? And we will start planning our meals, incorporate more fresh. So traditionally, we will do a big Sunday lunch, but I will buy more meat and stuff to then recook to do sure. shepherd's pie, whatever it might be in the week, or yeah. use it up in 
salads or soups or whatever it is. So it's then for us, it's you're forcing us, or not forcing is the wrong word, but creating that habit to be more organized, to go, well, we don't want to um, waste this. We've got that to use up. Okay, this week we've got leeks, so we will have leek and potatoes, whatever it might be. And then we'll top that up and go through accordingly of how we do that. So then interestingly, you're creating the habit to make sure it's all used and not wasted. So Yeah, exactly. And I think you get I hear that a lot from people in that, that sort of sense is they're being pushed to be more creative with food uh, and eat better. Uh, because there's also there's a more there's more of a an emotional attachment to the food. Yeah. Because maybe they follow Sunshine and Green Instagram and they'll you know, know the, the story, story behind it. Maybe because it's just because it's local. Ooh. They'll be like, well, I don't want to waste it. No. Put lots of effort into that. Exactly. Um, whereas you might not think the same from a supermarket perspective. No. And also if it's not great quality and it's, it, well, ever since Emily, and so Emily's my eight-year-old daughter, met you on the farmer's market, you are the nice tomato man. <laughs> so she's then, because she, you taught her that cherry tomatoes are like sweets when they're good quality. So you don't want to throw quality food away. Yeah. However, when it tastes like water and it's got no flavour, yeah. people find it easier to throw away because you're not missing out as much. Yeah, as sure. Much, yeah. So. I mean, you've got, you've got to think as well. And there's a reason food is tasty. Yeah. It's cause it's good for you. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's it's sounds silly, but it's like, why does raw meat smell pretty gross but cooked meat is really good it's because when you cook it you've you've opened up all the nutrients and made them available for mm. your body so if you're eating food that doesn't taste of anything it's probably not got much in it yeah well, maybe it does i don't know but i've never tested it i don't no. know anyone that has but um so yeah but i think it's the reason i put a fortnightly box on there was for that reason in that there's there's it's for some it's actually a lot yeah you know and it is a lot of food um to eat but if you eat a lot of food, that's fine. Yeah. And I think I did a bit of research. This was like 2016. I think the house average household spending on food was about 70 or 80 pounds a week, mm -hmm. which included takeaways. Wow. Yeah. And eating <laughs> out and drinks, I think. So, yeah. So when you way more than that. <laughs> well, yeah. And most people do. I mean, okay, that was a few years ago yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. But like the amount that's spent on groceries oh any amount yeah. um you know so it's i mean that's average across the country well yeah so there's some areas where yeah. you know things are different um, but also then you get and i think that's what nice where the farmer's market's come in because you get like one of our regular customers that came in to see you and you sorted something out for her because she comes in because she wants she but has to buy such small amounts just for her and her husband they don't eat a lot yeah so that's when there's yeah they can't manage a box but at least they can come and visit and know where you are so then they're relying on that regularity and well i hear that a lot come like, see you. even about the farmers markets just without the veg box there's there's older older people are come along and buy one carrot yeah like, i don't like going to supermarkets because i have to buy a packet and then yeah. i just throw them away and that makes me sad mm -hmm. there was a, one lady i don't grow peaches but she came along and said i haven't eaten a peach in decades because you can't buy one on its own you have to buy them in packets i love peaches yeah but i'll just throw five away if i buy a packet of six yeah you know, well that's sad yeah a mental isn't it on the flip side of it but... yeah i mean what i get as well is i get quite a few customers that will buy weekly or mostly four nightly customers but they will then come to a farmer's market in, yeah. the, in the off Top week up. yeah and just buy the leafy stuff yeah um because it doesn't you know you gotta eat that quicker yeah um so that's that's quite nice to see that happen and actually a lot of people come to the farmer's market first yeah. the pattern is and it's quite fun to see it They'll come to a farmer's market i'll meet someone then two or three weeks later they'll order a veg box then i won't hear from them for a few weeks but i'll see them at a farmer's market and they'll buy more they go I really like the fish box. I'll buy another one soon. Maybe a few more weeks, I'll buy another one. Just one-offs. Then a one-off a couple of weeks later. And then a few weeks where they'll buy a one-off every week. Yeah. Then they'll disappear for a few weeks. Then they'll just sign up. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, cause it's in their mind, you know, yeah. all the time it's there. They really like it. Yeah. But they want to try it out and then they don't want to commit. And then they're like, oh, I will just commit because I keep missing it. And now yeah. I'm missing out. Yeah. Um. So that's that's quite nice to see. And that's, that's the pattern recently. And most of the veg boxes now follow the farmer's markets. 
mm. goes about that story because they've come yeah. and seen the veg they've met me they've talked about it tried um, it tried it yeah and then then they'll go away and order a veg box yeah. and that's it's that sort of face-to-face side of marketing which is really strong it's really slow because you have to meet people yeah yeah but it's really good yeah and i don't know how else you do it like it's a real real difficult one because i know we've tried like the parish magazines but those are a bit more of a directory i think so if you're a plumber you need yeah, to be in those. It's knowing who's. Yeah, because yeah, I'll be yeah, like, yeah. oh, where's the local farmer? I'll get this out. Yeah. I mean, Ben advertised in Melford and the first magazine he made back all of that, I think he got three calls off the back of it because it's, yeah, it is very much a what it's, like you say, it's more of a process with you of trying the veg, meeting you, understanding the story. But also it's then being people's faces because if you think nowadays, Amazon tells you what you want as the minute i go oh, i think i need something i'll go on amazon and it's telling me exactly what you want randomly it keeps telling me to buy gingerbread man cutters at the moment no one because it's obviously a work amazon no one searched for gingerbread man cutters but apparently that's what i need christmas but exactly but it's that thing of two clicks and i've bought it it's it's that ease and that laziness and putting it in your and, face and that's of... something we've been trying to do with the website as well as to make it as easy as possible because yeah. it's there's too many clicks. I get bored. I won't do it if the website doesn't look good. No. Or it's a bit complicated. I'm like, I don't know, I'm going to do it. I'm no, bothered. click off, um, yeah. And Amazon's just too easy. Yeah. Um, But obviously, that's why it's so successful. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of stuff wrong with Amazon yeah. in many ways, but you, 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 always, you always think of the mindset of like, well, if you don't like it, invent something better. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's the way I see it. Um, it's like the Audi middle aisle. No one, no one needs anything from the Audi middle aisle. <laughs> you don't go into Audi to shop for whatever's in the middle of aisle, but everyone buys from it. It's all by chance, <laughs> yeah. Thing. They say, oh, it's on offer, it's cheap or whatever. So, yeah. But it's... Uh, yeah. Do you get... Because um, I'm from back in the day, so when I was the food buyer for the pubs, we'd buy what is now known, and I'm sure someone started it once, the wonky veg whatever group, because... The supermarkets obviously need specific sizes, weights, colour, blah, blah, blah. Because obviously the food, fruit and veg went into the pubs to be prepped and cooked. So the customers didn't see it, it's just the chefs. Mm-hmm. Do you get much? Because I was going to say, everything in my veg box is pretty, like a carrot looks like a carrot. Do you know what I mean? There's yeah, there, there aren't, there, there just aren't grayed outs like that. No. Um, no. No. <laughs> um, I mean, so... <laughs> Not that not everything's perfect, um, but there isn't. We don't the wonky veg will go in. If there's Ooh. anything that's not right. There's nothing graded out. There's nothing yeah, sized yeah. out. I mean, the carrots, as an example, they are all perfect in. They're straight. Yeah. The the size of variety is massive. The oh, big yeah, ones, yeah. little ones, that sort of thing. Um, and so, whereas the supermarket, they won't do that. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't get a carrot a foot long and then one a few inches no. long. No. Um, and it, it went so. Shelly, who packs the veg boxes for me, she, I'll say to her, I was like, in each box, try and make sure that, like, if a, one box has just large carrots and the other one has just small. So yeah. there's some uniformity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, especially with things like beetroot, for example. So yeah. Like, if you're going to cook them, you want them all the same size so yeah. they cook at the same rate. So there is that that sort of filtration on on different sizes because mm. some of the supermarket stuff it's it's really annoying because you'll go in there and you buy you see like wonky apples uh. they're not wonky at all they're just small yeah you know like, well that's just a chip isn't it to get cheap stuff off the farmer and then they yeah. do it like oh are we doing this for the farmer it's like no you're not no you're not no you can still be ripped <laughs> off like yeah. these he's now selling kilos of apples cheaper because you won't you won't accept the same yeah, grade it's, it's nonsense but on the side of it like here's an argument for the supermarkets being so picky is the farm shop I used to work on, he used to just put out sacks of potatoes, you know, roll the top down, they look quite nice, and people would pick all the big ones, and you'd end up with all the little ones, and no one would touch them. If you put them on the top of the next sack, they'd pick through and get all, you'd end up with more little ones. So we did an experiment there and put little ones in a plastic bag and tied them up, put them on the shelf, people bought them. (laughs) You know, it's like, well, what's that? So the supermarkets in their... They want things a certain size because yeah. going back to their research and the psychology of it, they know exactly what people want, what yeah. they've picked. And as a result, it's refined down to everything's got to be completely uniform. Yeah. All people won't buy it. Yeah. The truth is they will buy it. 
if just there's in no different choice formats. yeah it's just it's just yeah or or exactly you sell it in a different way but to 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 put it in there and say look what we're doing for the farmers we're selling wonky veg and it's cheaper for you as well so i don't know you're just scamming everyone mm. it's just buy apples by weight yeah regardless of their size you can put little ones in one bag big ones in another bag that's your yeah. your thing but pay the farmer the same price charge the customer the same price there's that's fairness yeah. as a business model that's rubbish because obviously the supermarkets make loads of money so they're yeah. they're correct yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in yeah. the sense of <laughs> making money because that's what they're doing yeah you know but in a fair society you wouldn't do that but no we don't i don't really grade out um things like the strawberries picking those massive variety in size Ooh. but you're going to pun it yeah. I've, I've got to pick them get them off the field pun it you pick the pun it you like yeah that's fine and it's the marshmallow strawberries i've got in june are the best strawberry you'll ever eat and i'll say that every day until june this is and true during that month the other strawberries the rest of the year are just nice but those ones a few weeks extra nice yeah, so you're going to have to wait for those, afraid. June. June. First come, first strawberries. Serve. That's what they're called. I love that they're called that. Interesting with strawberries and organic. You cannot buy organic strawberry plants in the UK. At all? At all. Anywhere. Nothing. They don't it's exist. It's not a thing. No. The, I had to get derogation, which means I had to ask the Soil Association for permission. So I have to prove that I can't buy any, and then they will give me permission to buy conventionally grown runners so just the plants and i plant them i grow them organically but they weren't grown organically to start with yeah wow and the reason so i don't know if this is entirely the reason but what i could decipher there's two possible reasons one is in organic there are certain diseases that strawberries get that are quite easy to transfer and are very Mm. hard to test for so testing is quite difficult yeah. And if you get that virus, you then can't, or whatever it is, disease, you yeah. then can't sell your runners. Yeah. And your ground can never grow strawberries again because it's there. So that's difficult. I'm not sure about that. Someone else will probably know more. Yeah. The other reason is, is that it's really expensive to certify a nursery for strawberry plants because you need two tests a year, two surveys, or, um, inspections a year because of diseases and stuff. Mm. So therefore, it's not a viable thing to do. And it was a really interesting conversation with the Soil Association because I was like, why is this? What is it? Nah. What's going on? And um, my certification officer explained. I said, okay, so so on one hand, Soil Association is here to help grow the organic industry. On the other hand, you're the very reason that we can't buy organic strawberry plants in this country. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I suppose we put it like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> cool. So can I have a derogation there? Yeah. Because <laughs> there, there is another way of doing it, and you can buy a handful of plants yeah. and grow them on. Um, so technically, my strawberries, they won't be organic next year. No. They won't be. They're in conversion. Oh, okay. This and year, they, they weren't organic. Even though they've been grown in an organ- certified organic farm using yeah. organic techniques, they weren't organic. Next year, they'll be in conversion. The year after, they will finally be organic strawberries. Yeah. So it's a real hassle. But it's honest. It is what it is. I think that's the that's the biggest thing is that you see a lot of things that through and having worked in supply chain for many years and getting things from different countries and when the auditors come in, it's very much of like, can you prove this? And yeah. if, I think the biggest thing I learned was um, the labour laws and the child labour and getting things from... Sure. And I think the biggest eye-opener for me was, uh, well, how do you, do you know that factory is? Oh, well, it's been audited. Yeah, but by who? Yeah. And it's, I think one statement was, you know they put up giant false walls and they've got everyone working behind that wall. I'm like, what? Yeah, there's like another factory. Yeah, there's some weird stuff out there. I mean, it's like just sort of with food. If you buy British food, the standards are really high. Uh, you know, animal welfare. I know there's... When you hear the, the vegan argument against eating food because of bad animal welfare, like I completely get it. I'm on board. Yeah. But we don't have industrial farming like in the States. So We do with chickens to an extent. You can still have caged chickens in this country and there are yeah. still indoor raised pigs. But there's some nuances to that argument as well because yeah. there's an argument that outdoor reared is actually worse than indoor. Anyway, another yeah. subject. But the point is, like, if you buy lamb, it's all outside just lives its life eating yeah. grass has a great time 
most of the beef, British beef, same thing, just lives outside being a cow. Yeah. Might be housed in winter, but still has a good time. Yeah. Like people work really hard to look after them. Yeah. They they trim their feet. They do all this stuff. Yeah. Um, so if you buy British, you can be guaranteed. Yeah. Um there's some sketchy stuff with labour though in this country. Even fruit picking is is probably one of the the sketchiest because there's a lot of agency workers. Mm. And whether or not many of those guys are legal is yeah is difficult. And whether or not they're being paid is also like how do you prove that? Yeah. So what I'm saying there is buy local because everyone on my farm gets paid, um, and you probably know them. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know. And I think that's the thing. If you're, it's the whole the shorter the supply chain the more you can trust it. And, and it's, it's the same as I remember having an argument with um, someone and it was to do with meat and I think it was specifically chickens and it was the narrative on the marketing narrative. So what was the customer was seeing? And we couldn't do British because no one would pay for it. So we couldn't buy British. So where do you buy from? Well, you buy outside of the UK. Yeah. And then it was how do we talk about that and make sure that that's okay. And then we're paying for the audits and checking the supply chain and going through the... And it was just really, really interesting. Pushed me to spend more and go to my local butcher every Saturday because I was just like, do you know what? I can't... You literally don't know what's on your plate. Because sure. the supply chain's so long, as in so long of going through certain things or so long in terms of miles, that actually, like you say... the more local you buy the more you can say oh actually that was great i've visited the farm <laughs> i've seen the yeah. i've seen the videos <laughs> i know exactly where that tomato or shards come well, exactly from. and there's 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 another side of it which is um from the employee's point of view so if you go and work on a big farm somewhere you, all you do is pick one thing all oh. day I'm not saying that, that you know there's some good bosses out there and good farms to work on. I know some of them, and the employees are paid well, paid really well, and they yeah. work hard and all this. But it's a factory job outside. Yeah. And there's a reason that a lot of these people are from abroad is the fact mm -hmm. that it's not that English people can't do it. It's just that why would you if you could go somewhere else and get the same wage and be indoors all day? Yeah. Um. So on a smaller farm or a smaller business. I mean, I've I've got quite a few people that have asked for jobs. I haven't had to put any ads out. I've got, there's a pool of people that will come and work. Yeah. That have come and ask. And because there's, the work is varied. Yeah. For a start, you'll do various things throughout each day. You'll probably know the people that you're growing for. Yeah. You'll certainly take some stuff home for your family. Um, and so there's that sort of, it brings a bit more meaning and yeah. purpose to the work. Yeah which you might not get if you're just picking cabbages for 12 hours every day for a few yeah. weeks and then oh, you move on to leeks for six months. It's just like, you know, so there's there's that side of it which has a bit more of a face and a bit more of a story for well, the employees as well as the customers. Yeah. Um, which is important because like going back to the, where we started and it's like if you're doing a nine to five, well, if me personally, I'm doing a nine to five, I kind of think, well, what's, why am I doing this? What's the point? Yeah. Because there's no, it's just working the coal face for the yeah. man. Right, and that's not doesn't sit well with me. No, and uh, you know, I'd like to be able to offer employees as much as they might be on a nine to five. I'd like them to know that they're not just working for me; they're working for the customers. Yeah. Um, and certainly with an apprentice, when I get one, I would like to be able to set them up on farmers markets as well. Yeah. Be like, this is part of your job. You need yeah. to do this market because there's the experience of selling, talking to the customers, knowing what they want. Yeah. And also a day out. Yeah. Do something different. You know, the farm today, you're at a farmer's market. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we... It's the same when we were looking for someone for um, a breakout. And the argument is, because we're so small and agile, the the future of that position is, you want your own shop? You want breakout in Sudbury? Then crack on. I'll show you how to do it. And once you've yeah. got it, here's your business. Crack. That's like, so you've seen every aspect of the business. It's not a case of, because you kind of look at a local um, company, small company like that, and you're like, well, I'm never going to have the owner's job because they're the owner. Well, actually, you can have your own shop, but over here, or you can do this, or do you want to grow social media? Then fine, you go after social media. You want to set yourself up on your own and do it? Yeah. I will teach you how to do that. So it's that, rather than the corporate thing of going up the 
ladder and proving yourself and actually that person doesn't like you so no you ain't going to move there it's, yeah I think it's it's just to me it's a lot more opportunity yeah and I think you can do that and that's that's the point you know it's they say there's a certain agility in a small business I mean there's certain things like G's Fresh I know they offer out a lot of educational situations which look really good I don't know where they do the college side of it or if they do I assume they do Maybe it's all in-house. Um, but that's something that needs addressing from a farming point of view. Cool. In Especially horticulture. Like it's, there's, there's nowhere really, you can go and do horticulture and landscaping at Otley cool. um, and Rittle. And you can, I think you can do horticulture there as well. But it's all ornamental stuff. Yeah. There isn't something specific to farming or market gardening to do with horticulture. And that's going to be... That's going to be the biggest hurdle. It's something I had a conversation with the local MP about because he's hot on local on rural jobs. Yeah. Okay. Well, farming should be part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, perhaps. Slight tangent, but again, like my neighbour, him and his son farm most of the farm by themselves, two mm. of them, and it's a couple of thousand acres or something. Then um, a veg grower that I buy in from near Ipswich sometimes, they use robots. Um, for drilling and weeding, particularly in things like um, uh, beetroot and sugar beet, mm. uh, crops like that. So there's no one there. No. And I, well, okay, should we even bother? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's a new selling point in the future is human-grown food. Mm. That's a possibility. But are you going to pay for that? Who's going to bonnet? Well, it's the same as arguing, like you were saying about Waitrose earlier. It's all the upheaval of they've taken out the majority of their cash is so it's a lot more you i'm doing my own checkout which i did have a bit of a hissy fit the other day because of i had a big trolley and they wanted me to fit it all in that that tiny tiny thing i was like well how do i do it then well you just have to put it on i was like it, it fall off but <laughs> just... yeah there's, there's... where's my human <laughs> i think that's it uh, there was a supermarket somewhere up north that's just got rid of all of their self-checkouts have they yeah, yeah i'm not gone back yeah but again, it's that thing. Do you want cheap stuff or do you want people? Yeah. You know, that's the same with farming. Do you want cheap food? Because you can have cheap food, but something's, something has to pay for it somewhere. And it's either the environment, which is yeah. what we're seeing like in massive amounts all over the world. Like cheap beef. Can't really do it, I'm afraid. Yeah. Unless you cut down the rainforest. Right, that's, that's, that's it. So if you want it, cool, we can do it. But then it's going to be bad somewhere yeah. else um so if you want to do things environmentally and socially conscious yeah unfortunately it's, it does cost a bit more um and if you think okay well the government could just subsidize those things yeah who pays that yeah it's on your tax bill i had that discussion with someone once about i shouldn't have bit i was just in a bad mood but some of the, some of the farmers market was oh god your spring onions are expensive again it's the same thing as the raspberries actually they were cheaper it's yeah. just they're in a bigger bunch so yeah they looked like more uh looked like it cost more it was one pound 80 for uh, 250 grams and i think the supermarkets are like 75p for less than 100 grams yeah so same <laughs> yeah exactly but anyway um and i said to them i was like well do you pay taxes like yeah it's like, okay so you pay so you pay a subsidy towards those supermarkets i don't get any subsidies so it's a fair price. Also, do you want to weigh them up? Do you want to bring them, bring the supermarket ones here? Let's have yeah, a look yeah. at the quality and the difference. Like, <laughs> I shouldn't have done it. So it's not really done. But I was just in a bad mood. And they kind of just looked at me blankly and were like, well. Uh, um, but then it's like, you see now the time-lapse videos of food as well, of how quickly it's going off or how long it sure. lasts. And yeah. that's always, a, but that's another whole marketing change in the narrative of that's when you would need actually a whole marketing arm to literally do all that for you to set that up and show it yeah. to prove a point of that you're kind of already making by doing it naturally anyway so yeah and that that style of sort of thing of com like i don't it's a quite negative thing isn't it so yeah. well, look how bad these are compared to us exactly. it's like i don't everyone really go down that route because it's no because and that's what i mean you kind of it's the narrative that you're doing is all the positive narrative. Yeah. I don't agree with putting people down. It's also it's... like there is so much opportunity. It's like you say, Ooh. like we, you could say, oh, go back to the farming is broken. So yeah. the food system is broken. 
Is it or is there opportunity to make it better? Yeah, is that because that's the truth. Like there is. We can watch your spin on it. Everyone can make it better. And that's the point. Like if you that's the point in being alive. That's why the world is better now than it was a hundred years ago. Mm. Because everybody all the time, apart from a few crazy people, yeah. are going, I'm gonna try and make this better. Whether yeah. it's like I'm gonna make my house better, I'm gonna buy some new shoes. Yeah. Right, you're gonna make your life better. Whatever it is. And that's the same with with everything. I yeah. mean it's better now, isn't it? Yeah. So who's your ideal customer over your I don't want to say because it'd be rude <laughs> um, no there's so box scheme customers are good um, I mean there's customers that had for a very long time yeah. that I never hear from ever they just I deliver and that's that yeah um, occasionally I see them on the doorstep and we have a really nice conversation and it's all complimentary and happy and nice but you just don't hear from them. Yeah. And that's kind of nice. It's just less admin. But that's just like me being sort of a bit grumpy maybe. But then I know, I don't think it is. It's just you get you get different types of customers and some some do. They just, like, I don't talk to anyone wherever I buy unless I buy from yourself. So that's a work thing. But I would probably be one of those customers if we didn't interact through work. I'd just you'd deliver my box. Now, if yeah. I'm out early enough for my run, I say hello. If not, I don't see you. And you pay your money and got your box. Because yeah. I work, so I can't come to the farmer's markets necessarily. So that's my... Yeah, it's, it's, the good thing with that is it, is it shows that, that the system is working and everything's good. There's another type of customer that I that annoys me in the moment, but I value quite highly, um, is the customer that is very honest yeah and <laughs> they never i don't there's there's one or two that have complained but and those people just i don't know there's not what you can do but no there's those that that will raise things that they're not happy about in yeah. a constructive way and there's not many of them no because you rarely get positive or negative feedback no mostly you get nothing so your when, positive feedback is they're carrying on buying yeah exactly That's your positive feedback exactly and you know, I, I, whenever when I buy things in from other farms, I will send an email back if it's really good and say oh. it's really good. Yeah. And if it's not, I'll send one back to not good. Yeah. I try and do that consciously because, you know, when when I get an email of someone saying, "Oh, I think it's really enough potatoes in it," and it depends on why they've done it. Or, but also sometimes, you know, Shelley packing boxes, she'll make a mistake. Yeah. And I won't see that, um, and she's the last point before the customer. Yeah. Um, so that goes in a box and so there'll be customers like oh there was someone recently there was a mouldy bean in there yeah nothing to do about it it's mouldy on the plant it gets through it gets it just it should have been yeah. filtered out and it wasn't yeah and actually that's a human element as well well it is that's, and and that's like okay so no, but, none of us are 100 percent. none of us well, exactly. there's always going to be something and you know that if there's one box with one thing like that in then there's got to be another one yeah there just has to be yeah and so but one customer has decided to bring it up yeah. A long-term customer, actually, customer never bats, never says anything. And yeah. they said something. It's like, oh, okay. Then I can go to Shelley and go, can you just be a bit more careful? Yeah, yeah, um, Make sure that doesn't happen. Um, so those customers I value a lot, even though when I get those emails, I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. It's that instant it. <laughs> Yeah. Like, so, you know, I, I, <laughs> the, the human nature thing is to feel angry with them. Yeah. Because you've made a mistake. Yeah. It's your fault. And I think that's... That's something you can take out into life in a lot of places. Yeah. If someone's angry with you, it's probably them. Yeah. Or anything else, you know. So, so that's one of those things that I do value that a lot. Um, I don't know. I don't really have a favorite cust- type of customer. They're all good because they order. Yeah, exactly. They seem to like it. They tell their friends. Yeah. Um, there's some people that share posts on Instagram a lot. That's really nice. Mm. Um, there's the regulars at the farmers markets you can always rely on. They come for a chat. Yeah. Um, sometimes they, there's, there's some people that come along. Oh, every week, every week there's a lady that comes. Just, oh, I've, I've just been to Waitrose. Don't we need anything? It's like, you know, you're coming here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why do you tell me this every week? <laughs> yeah. Stop it. So they're also my favourite that that person because it's funny. It's just like, um, yes, you've come to tell me you don't need anything. <laughs> nice, thank you. But also, I think it's. On the flip side, I've now, because I'll go to you, I'll go to the butchers. So I know the letter. So my customer service expectations are up here. 
Now I get then have a monthly delivery from a supermarket that I have delivered to my house most of the time. I changed that this week so I had a different one deliver. And they just came up, dropped my bags and walked off. And I was like, where's my chat? <laughs> like, because I've got a dog. Normally she's like that. The other guy used to go, oh, hang on, I've got a biscuit. And I'd be like, I have the whole conversation. I need to give her the biscuit because she'll have your arm off because we're training her, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, just dumped my bags and walked off. I was like, oh, I don't know. Oh, where's my customer? I mean, it was fine. Everything was fine. But now, because I've sort of conditioned myself to buy local more and have a chat with people, and I am paying a bit extra for that quality customer service after care of that, I was actually a bit taken aback. It's like, oh, she didn't want to chat. She's gone now. <laughs> but that's the stories bit as well, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. And it's the same thing saying about, like, if you have staff in a small business, you know, they'll, they'll, they might know you. Yeah. Yeah, at some point there'll be someone else deliver yeah. your veg box and you might know them. Yeah. There'll be a chat there. And then there'll be me calling up, why are you still standing there? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, these the, the large company like that person at the supermarket. She doesn't care. She's got a round to do yeah. as well. There's someone on their back. Moving on. Yeah. Like those those vans are monitored. They know yeah. where they are. Yeah. You know, you see the stress in an Amazon driver's face yeah. when it's dark. And you know that there's someone yeah. somewhere, computer logging how long he stood there. For, yeah. How long he drove up and down that street looking yeah. for that house. Like it's. There's a whole world of stress on top of these these yeah. situations, and you, the human element is kind of irrelevant. Yeah, but it's like when we were talking about while well, the pubs are closing, I've had friends that were regulars at a pub for a number of years, and there was a bit of a disagreement. They left, but they said even after a few years, they'd still go in and have to order their drink. Now another pub, they walk in. Oh, gin and tonic is it? And they'd be pouring it. Sure. So they've still done the check, even though they will have the same drink over and over again. And that was her feedback. She said we would still sit it down and be like, what can I get you? And it's like, well, the same. And it said you, it's going back to the olden days where you'd have the guys and you'd have a certain glass or a certain tanker or whatever it was. And I said that's your local element. That's you knowing your customers and you knowing exactly what they like. Oh, so-and-so, yeah, they want to double up on their potatoes or they like... Well, actually, I know they don't like radishes, so just don't put radishes in. You can also, you can tie in another thing, like specifically with the pubs. It's, it's go back to farming. A hundred years ago, if you walked across the fields here, there were people everywhere farming. Mm. So the pubs are always full. There were loads of people living, and young people. Yeah. Nowadays, and it, it ties into the price of food and having extra stuff. Back then, people didn't go anywhere. You walked to work. Yeah. Maybe you rode a horse, I don't know, but yeah. you know, whatever. You you didn't drive to work. Yeah. Now in the villages, everyone, I would say most people in a village don't socialise with people in the village. Yeah. You know, it's somewhere else. Yeah. So the pub isn't what it used to be. A pub no. is for people from other villages to come to. Oh, there's a nice pub in that village. Let's go there. It's yeah, not yeah. the pub yeah. anymore. And so it's, it's more of a, it's a, there's a lot to it when you think about pubs. It's a real expression or or it really shows how society and culture has changed, mm -hmm. particularly in rural areas. And I guess in towns as well, because you know, a lot of people in Sudbury commute. Yeah. Everybody gets in a car and drives somewhere in the morning. Yeah. What? Why? I do it and I sometimes think like this is weird. Yeah. <laughs> because where are we all going? <laughs> <laughs> right why don't we just work where we live yeah it's kind of nuts yeah you know and you lean take that to the environmental side of it it's like oh, we only electric cars like, no, just don't just like work somewhere else like, yeah. don't work, Walk to work 20 miles away yeah but that's the nature of work that's the countryside has changed you don't need many farmers anymore so mm -hmm. there's no jobs out here so the villages and when when people say oh it's too expensive to live in a village for a young oh. person yeah because there's no work here yeah only old people can come here when they've finished yeah. They go live in the countryside. So it's, it's a big shift, and the pubs are right in the center of that. Yeah. So they're sitting there like, well, who's going to go first? The, the community breaks down, so you don't need the community hub anymore. Yeah. You might not know the landlord anymore. Yeah. And that's, so it's, it's a change. I don't know if it's positive or negative, really. You, you don't know. It's just different. It's, it's just change. Um, it's sad because pubs, I mean, I grew up with local pubs, and everyone knew everyone, and pubs, literally, some of them just sold beer. Yeah. You can't do that now. Um, there's another interesting change coming with pubs that I sort of noticed is that the rise of the tap room. 
Mm. And it's almost a step backwards because yeah. pubs used to all brew their own beer. That's how it worked. And that's what you went there for. Yeah. And then the big breweries came in, wrecked it. Yeah. And now people are going back. And there's the number of small pubs now with tap rooms in is growing. Yeah. yeah and yeah. they're bringing in food vans yeah. to supplement the food side of it. Yeah. It's just an interesting change. It's kind of backwards but forwards at the same yeah. time. Or then you could even, with or without the food vans, have a chef in there who's like, right, yeah. Greg, what you got this week? That's my menu. Sure. So you then have a everything going back to a pub with the tap room, with the access to a veg, access to a butcher. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's it. Yeah. It's the future, but it was the past. It's incorporating the the past with with a lot of lessons. I, I mean, I had another farmer say, oh, yeah, organic. It's just going back in time, isn't it? It's like oh. sort of, but. With a huge amount more knowledge, yeah, I, a lot more. We know in detail what's happening in the soil now yeah, yeah, yeah. and why we do these things. It's not just oh yeah, put pill yeah. white stuff grows well. Yeah, it's like we know how much to put on. Yeah, we have tested. You know what micronutrients are in there. We can top those up. You know, it's, there's a lot more going on. It's like my dairy argument though. Whenever anyone goes, I'm intolerant to dairy. Okay, this no one was intolerant to dairy. I'm intolerant back. to you. That's but... the... <laughs> um... harsh, Greg. But it's the we've always bought from Byam's Dairy. Sure. Are you intolerant to dairy or are you intolerant to those chemicals and pasteurised to make your whatever, whether it's full fat, whatever it is, to make it last? So, because my bottle amount goes off in two, three days, and well, two days in the summer, anything else from the supermarkets, I can have sat there for months. So what are you actually intolerant to? Well, it's, I think, they yeah, don't like that, though, it's, it's so a I don't big bring one, that one it? out very often. The, the homogenizing <laughs> process of milk's a weird one, right? Do, do you know when that started? I was talking about it the other day, because I remember as a kid, even skimmed, semi-skimmed milk, you'd get a little bit of a, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, cream on the top. Yeah. But at some point in the last, I don't know, 20 years, you start homogenizing milk. Yeah. Which I think is a big one for the intolerance part oh. of it, because it changes the size of the fat particles and yeah. makes you fatter, clogs yeah. your arteries up. I mean, it's weird. Whereas yeah. if you just have milk, again, like go back fifteen hundred years, thousand years, people living in a house with a cow. Yeah. Tell them that milk's bad for them. Yeah. <laughs> like we're going to die if we don't. Yeah, exactly. Like, we'll starve What's if we don't drink this you? milk. Yeah. What are you want about? Yeah. It makes me fart. I don't care. <laughs> Could rather fart than die. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, it's like it's a genetic thing. Isn't it? We've 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 evolved to to take dairy. Go and tell Genghis Khan, Genghis Khan, right, that milk was bad for him. Yeah. That's all. They they rode around on horses, drank the milk of the horse, yeah. and killed everybody. Yeah. And they were they were strong. Yeah. And the thing is, and it's the same with the whole organic argument, isn't it? Of just, well, we know now what those chemicals do. We know it's, yeah. This a weird and one the reason with that, yeah. why the chemicals were brought in to grow everything bigger and do yeah. this, but you've got, so, yeah. yeah. It's a it's a funny one because there's the I th when I think about chemicals chemical farming, think of it in context of like the Romans thought lead water pipes were okay, uh. right? It was all right back then. Lead was safe, <laughs> and then one day it wasn't. Everyone actually, that's terrible. I shouldn't do that. It makes people crazy. Yeah. Is it the same experiment? No, glyphosate's all right. Don't know. If, I mean, so on both sides of it, I haven't seen proper in-depth studies to say they're good or bad yeah. or negative there doesn't exist there's just one camp saying oh they'll give you this sort of disease and another camp saying they don't yeah show me the science yeah because if it's fine I'll, I'll i'll give up my organic license and i'll use it yeah. because weeds are a pain yeah exactly but until you can actually definitively say that properly and not some sketchy, like, Monsanto, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. You can drink it. Like, mm, can you? Yeah. You know, it's like, I don't... That's, that's That, I think, is missing from a lot of these arguments because yeah. it's, it's, it's so divisive, isn't it? You, you're either on one camp or the other. It's like, just can we just be objective Yeah. a little bit and study this properly rather yeah, yeah. than do, do a live research. experiment on people? Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's in the food. All of this stuff is in it, and we're eating it every day. And no one knows if it's good or bad. No. Because, you know, these, these pharmaceutical companies, they 
as far as I'm aware, and I might be wrong in this, but when they test a product, say a weed killer or a fungus or whatever it is, they test it in the field. They make sure it's effective uh. on for its purpose. And if it is, they'll use it. And you go, okay, so cool. That really good at keeping fungicide off stuff. Yeah, yeah. Have you, have you tested it on humans? Yeah. Test makeup before you use it, Ooh. and that's Why just going you on not? your face. You know, it'll be. You know, and, and this argument you hear a lot as well is, okay, so why don't we label may contain traces of neonicotinoids, glyphosate, yeah. and all the other things on there? But you don't. You do if it contains peanuts. Yeah. Right? <laughs> may contain sesame seeds. Oh, my God. <laughs> was Was made in a room which had nuts in yeah. five years ago. Yeah. That label's on there. But there isn't a label to say what chemical contains pesticides. Yeah, and I I went for an interview once with a just doing random interview, and I wasn't qualified for the job. I did get offered the job, but um, uh, for an agronomist, trainee agronomist, basically, and we ended up having a two or three hour conversation rather than an interview because it's brilliant, just curious. And yeah. um, part of it, I was like, because I wasn't I wasn't really into organic at the time. I didn't really understand it as yeah. such. Um, but I had been on this conventional dairy farm and realized that that model wasn't going to work for my lifetime. That's, we talk about that in a minute, that's what pushed me to organic. But I was talking to this guy and he was like, so I was trying to hone in on what the job of an agronomist was. Uh. And a lot of it is, so some of it is to advise on what plants need, yeah. um, do soil tests and, and make sure there's the right nutrition for the plants. That's part of it. But another big part of it is to stay up to date with legislation on different chemicals. Mm -hmm. um, not only legislation, but what the buyers will accept. Yeah. So supermarkets have tolerances on how much of a certain pesticide or whatever is in certain things. So when you buy a conventionally grown apple, there are pesticides sprayed on it obviously yeah um and other things and they are tested to make sure there's not too much oh wow so if you eat a lot of that yeah you're still going to get a lot of that and a lot of them now like the big thing with neonicotinoids whatever side of the fence you sit on and whether you think you should use them or not there's a lot of farmers that hate the ban on it right. and i get that because it's affected their their business quite a bit but it's a systemic pesticide which oh. means the plant sucks it up yeah. So that it spreads through the leaves and it stays there for the duration of the plant's life. And then we harvest it. Yeah. So it's there. hasn't gone anywhere. Might be in small amounts, but Still a lot there. of people cook with oilseed. Yeah. It's in everything. Yeah. So then you start going, well, okay, so it is there. Have you t is it all right for us? Yeah. Because it is, it's nicotine, sort of. Um. It kills insects. It's a nerve toxin. <laughs> What's it going to do to a human? I mean, maybe nothing. <laughs> but where's the study to say yeah, it does nothing? Who's tested and it? everyone's up in arms, like, oh, well, it kills the bees. Yeah, it kills the bees, but okay, the rest of us? Yeah. Don't know. You know, it was one of those sorts of things. You think, can we just have some proper science on it rather than a bunch of people shouting at each other? Yeah. You know, and there's a lot of, like, glyphosate's very controversial. They're currently looking to renew the license on that in this country. And there's farmers out there actively saying, we can't farm without it. Yeah. Which I know is nonsense because I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more work and more effort. I know other farmers that do. You don't get the same yield, no. granted. Probably. You probably could. Pr humans are pretty good at figuring stuff out. If you take yeah. it away, don't figure it out. But no yeah, one is. Yeah, they're not going to. The ones that say we can't farm without it, they're not just going to shut down. <laughs> no, you, you'll figure so, it out. Yeah. <laughs> but also, I wouldn't want to. Like, I, there's another side of me that thinks, okay, so is there a case for using it? But less often. Yeah. Because at the moment, these these things, particularly weed killers, get used multiple times in a year. Mm. And you think, okay, what if what if once every ten years or or less, once every rotation you came through to spray off, start with a black slate. Yeah. So from my perspective as an organic grower, I use cover crops. Mm. Now at the end of my rotation before I put a cover crop in, there's always a few docks, there's some thistles in there that have come up gradually over the period of that rotation what if i were to spray it off? i'm not going to do this but yeah, yeah. what if i sprayed it off then and i put the cover crop in 
and that'll be there for two or three years. So no food is grown on that space yeah. for two or three years. And then we go back to food. But it gives me a blank slate mm -hmm. when I start again. You go, is there a case for that? Maybe. But at the moment, they're not all glyphosate. Glyphosate's used probably once in a, a year for a farmer, but yeah. they'll desiccate crops. Do you know what desiccation is? Kills everything. Well, they put it on the crop before harvest. Yeah. So sometimes with wheat, for example, the wheat will be ready. Yeah. The stalk will still be green. So they'll spray it off because it means, oh, okay. it means they can harvest it better yeah. and quicker. And it's, it's a good thing because it means they don't lose the crop. Yeah. It means they can get it in earlier and quicker, but there's then no weed killer on the food. Yeah. I don't know about that. I'm not sure. Is it okay? Have you tested it? Yeah. Do you know what happens? Just yeah. So that's my point. Is that just test it and then 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 we can say it's good. Yeah. But I don't see anyone handing out I don't see any agronomists campaigning going, here's a study. Here it is that we've yeah, tested yeah. it on humans, like we have like any medication. Yeah. You yeah. have to test it on people first. Yeah. But not chemicals. No. Did Scary stuff, isn't it? Just just odds. This can we just be sensible about it? Yeah. But when there's money involved, you guess you can't. Yeah. It goes back yeah. to the bottom line comment, doesn't it? It does. And I, I I'm always cautious about talking about that because there's the chemical side of it. Because I know that there's there is some good that comes out of it. Well, you yeah. know, there's a lot of food produced and there's a lot of people that get food from that style of farming. Yeah. And so I don't want to put it down necessarily because I don't, the reason for that is I don't have the answers. No, and all their packaging says wash your fruit and veg before you use it. So it kind of, there's a reason why that's stamped on the, uh, on yeah. the packaging as well. So yeah. it does it does bring it to a lot of people, but at the same time, it's is it the right way? And it's a huge risk to trial something else when <laughs> your crop rotation and your acres and acres and acres of thousands of acres are every 10 years and it's a that's, and that's a that, that i think is where where the you know a lot of farmers are caught on a treadmill and i think to break that is going to be very hard yeah and i would be in favor of some grants available to transition to a new system yeah whether it's an environmental scheme or whatever it is a new, new style of farming like this this regen thing that's happening bring some livestock back onto farms yeah do more mixed farming but there's for a start there's a skills deficit um on that side of stuff so for a farm like my neighbors the arable so for them to come into fruit veg or livestock yeah they don't have the skills so what no. if you had a grant based system instead of a subsidy system yeah exactly. where you can say okay we will set you up and cover you until the new system is is working and is viable yeah. i think that's a possibility and that would be interesting um you know because rather than just leave people stranded yeah, because I don't think anyone, you know, I think everyone wants to run a business and be good and do. Like farmers want to do good for the world, all of them. Yeah, don't care how hardcore conventional they are. They yeah, all care yeah. about the countryside. Yeah, exactly. All care about the food. All care about communities and people. Yeah, and work work really hard. And I think there's a lot of like, I don't know, you get a lot of rubbish thrown at them. Yeah, oh, stop killing this, stop killing that. It's like well, they're not. Well, yeah, feeding everyone. They're kind of yeah, they're constantly fighting, aren't they? So yeah, yeah. So it's a tough one, that. Well, on that note, because it is 10 to 12. <laughs> there go. Yeah. Thanks for coming on, Greg. If um, I'd be really interested, anyone listening to this, as always, please um, share and tag someone in that's really interested in that side of things. As um, Greg said a few times, the best thing you can do to support is sign up to the Veg Scheme, visit him at the Farmer's Market. Tryandgreen.co.uk. That's the one. Um, and yeah, get in touch. He's always uh, keen to go and see him at a farmer's market, try the cherry tomatoes that taste like sweets and sign up to the Red Watch scheme. Thanks for coming on, Greg. That's all right. Thanks for the invitation. <laughs> <laughs>Thanks for listening to this episode we really hope you've enjoyed it if you have please share with a friend who you think needs a bit of help with starting a business or even their small business which they've already got going please like and subscribe to our podcast which always helps a small business or small podcast like us and check the show notes we all have everything in there relating to the episode which you might need might want to read and links to anyone we've interviewed and certain subjects we've spoken about and thanks for listening.